Welcome to Cure Aquatics and Exotics. My name is Susie and today I'll be cleaning out some aquariums. For the most part, I do the same process in all of my aquariums, but when it comes to substrate, I do each one just a little bit different. Whether it's like a fully gravel tank, heavily planted tank, bare bottom tank, or even a tank with sand on the bottom. Each one gets cleaned out with many of the same processes, but the substrate's a little different in each one. Let's go take a look. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey. Welcome to Co Aquatics and Exotics. My name's Susie and today I'll be cleaning out some aquariums. Many of the aquariums as I clean out, I do the exact same process in all my tanks. I remove the lid, wash the lid, I use the original magic eraser. I use this for the black rims of all the tanks, when I remove the lights at the top of the lights, any of the filter lids and things like that. Anything that's on the outside that doesn't touch the water, this is very safe for the water anyway, but that way I, I don't cross contaminate my tanks. So I'll use the same sponge for all of them. I use a bucket that I put the tank water in so I can clean out the inside of the filter material. A towel, which I would show that I have ready, but I don't. And my scraper. My scraper broke last week. Well, actually it was two weeks ago and I didn't think it was a big deal. And it's a big deal for me. I use this all the time to scrape the inside front glass. And for some of the aquariums that I don't have like autos in or um, a mono shrimp, I clean all of the inside, all four walls of the glass with this razor blade. And, and I'll show you how I do that. And and my python for water changes. And I'm gonna clean off the black top of the light, just in case anything fell on it, which a lot of times there does. Then I'm gonna move the light out of the way and clean the rim of this tank. Now this sponge that I'm using, I call this my rim sponge, because this sponge is never gonna go in the tank so I'm basically just using it to clean off things that are not a part of the tank. I have a fresh sponge that I use for the actual tank. And I'll clean off the top of this. And that I can do with chlorinated water because you know what, Jimmy Crack Corn, I don't care. And I don't think these floating plants are helping, but I'm gonna take these sponges out and put them right into here. And I'm gonna wash them off with tank water. I gotta say, I'm not real fond of this. I brought these floating plants in and it's just basically floating algae. Now I gotta get the sponge that's for the tank, which is a brand new sponge. So for the glass that's not super stuck algae, I just use magic eraser. I need um, a razor blade, I don't have a scraper. My scraper fell off and I guess it broke the connection between the handle. Most of it is just superficial because I just cleaned the tank. And see how this water is starting to get pretty mucky? This is what I do and I make sure to do this before I do my water change, just to make sure in the beginning I kind of did it backwards. I did this during my water change and now I'll do a water change. So what I'm doing with this water change, I'm gonna turn on the water in order to create a siphon but then I'll turn the water off and hope the siphon continues so I can gravel back without too much suction. And I'm hovering because I'm hovering over dirt. So obviously if I stuck the siphon in there, dirt would come out. But hovering over the top seems to get a lot of the waste. And I'll turn the water off to see if the siphon continues. And it is continuing. So it's still got a suction going. Yep, it's just not at, it's not removing the water faster than I'm able to clean off surfaces. And I'm gonna get my tank sponge, because I can see that, so now that I'm done vacuuming the gravel or the substrate, I'm gonna leave the hose here a few inches above and finish by draining some water. Then I'll fill it back up with water and put my safe in it, my water conditioner. As I start to refill my tanks with water, 
The water conditioner that I use is safe. It's a very concentrated form and it removes chlorine, chloramines, and ammonia, detoxifies nitrates and nitrates. But this is what I use for my water conditioner. And one quarter teaspoon will work for 300 gallons. So when I do my water changes, it's about 300 gallons of water that I'm using to change when I'm doing down here. A little bit more. So I'll put a teaspoon. I'll put a quarter teaspoon in a container like this, fill it with water. And just now, and here's how I measure my teaspoon, my quarter teaspoon, like that. Put it in here. Phew, it smells lovely. Put the lid on. Now this is my water conditioner for all my water changes today. So as I go around and refill, I'll just slowly drip in this into it and I have not had a problem yet. It works well for me. It lasts a very long time, but I also use this in my pond. I use this out in my tubs. I use this upstairs in my aquariums and my turtle tanks. I use it everywhere. So I need a lot of it. So I'm just saying I'm good. I keep the lid on tight when I'm not using it. I use it every week. So, so now I'll walk around with this container and as I'm changing water, I put proportionate amounts of in. So I take it from super duper concentrate and make my own concentrate and take it around and do my water changes. So now we'll check out the progress of this and how it looks over time. The water's going to settle a bit. I'm going to see what it looks like. Okay, so now for a tank with sand in it, here's how I gravel vac. It's a little different. I do the same process as all my tanks with my special sponge that's just for the rim and I use it all around the rim you can see where there's hard water spots but it's clean so I if I'm changing all four or six of these tanks I'll do all the rims all the lights together then I do all the tanks so when I am gravel vacuuming sand it's very different than if I'm doing a planted tank or if I'm doing gravel or if I'm doing a bare bottom so here's how I use the python when I'm gravel vacuuming. Well, it's not really gravel vacuuming. While I vacuum the bottom of this tank, I kind of hover over the sand, barely touching the end of the python to the sand. So it's more like hovering over the sand just to get the loose debris that's all around the top. Some, whether it's uneaten food or some mulm. And I'll just go back and forth and I can tell there's like a it's almost like a tiny aquatic layer of dust on the sand. So I just go by like just like a regular vacuum and if something gets stuck, I just pick the python up, it breaks the cycle and keeps it going. Um, I make take very special care to pick up the filter and underneath the wood where there's a lot of debris that accumulates. And let me show you why I don't go into the sand. So if I go in the sand, I am getting a lot of sand in my hose and that will clog up my sink pretty quickly. So, uh, see all that? That's all sand. That's not waste, that is sand. So I hover. That's what I do, I hover. Or I'll let it go. So that is why I hover over sand. So this is how I vacuum out sand. Cleaning out the gravel is a little different. I'm gonna get this hose deep down inside. See how the gravel is not coming up, but the waste is. It's not the same as sand. I guess if you had a super fine, fine gravel, it would be, but no. And here I can do this rough because there's no babies in here yet. So I was trying to do a good gravel vac before the babies come in. And the bare bottom tank is even easier. So as I start to suck out, as long as Jay leaves me alone, the gravel will stay and I'll get all the debris and the waste detritus off the bottom.
So I take turns. If I have a hang on the backs filter and a sponge filter in the same tank, I take turns on the times. I'll usually take turns. So this week when I'm cleaning my tanks, I'll do the hang on the back filter. And the next week when I clean my tanks, I will do the sponge filter. And if you're not sure how I clean my sponge filters, I did a video all about sponge filters, why I like them, where I get them from. I'll put the link up there if you're interested in, in using sponge filters to filter your aquarium. I think they're great. I wonder if you can hear that pulsating sound of my washer machine. It's okay. Because as I'm cleaning out the tanks, I'm also doing my laundry. And I can't stop either one. Both need to get done today. I've been procrastinating on the laundry, that is. Not cleaning my tanks because I enjoy cleaning my tanks. I don't know why I don't enjoy laundry. Some people do. Not me. I'm not one of them. But at least once a week, I'll clean either the sponge filter or the hang on the back filter. So right now, let me show you how I do the hang on the back filter. The first thing I'm going to do is get my bucket of aquarium water so that I don't lose any beneficial bacteria. And I'm going to remove the light again, the lid, and I'm going to unplug it. The lid I already washed. Where's my bucket? I'm going to make sure to put the inside stuff in here. So I've got my actual filters, the catch-all, whatever you call that, the catch-all. Then I'm going to turn the hose on, so I'll talk to you first. I'm going to take my python and suck out all this water. And the reason I'm doing that is I know there's stuff that's settled on the bottom, and I don't want to leave it in there. And I'm going to try to do a close-up so you can see. In the tank water, I'm rinsing this off. It doesn't usually get too dirty if you do it every week. Put that back there. Put that here. And I'm going to squeeze out these sponges. Some, at some point, I'm going to get new sponges. There we go. I fill this back up and plug it back in. There we go. And then I put the lid back on. One of the reasons I love this filter, it kicks, kicks back on all the time. So that is how I clean my aquariums. Anyway, thanks guys, and I will see you next time. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.